everyone, Bethany here, and I am joining you from the BB Production Studio channel. Today, I am playing with the Not Too Shabby Shop a box of the month for October. I love this box. It's amazing. It's fun. There are so many ideas that are in this box. And today, I'm just going to continue playing. I had mentioned in one of my videos on my channel that I wanted to make some Christmas tags. So what I did was I used this very ancient hole punch and I punched out a bunch of my favorite patterns from the Sparkling Christmas Wishes paper pad. And then I also punched out some Nina White 110 pound cardstock because I am aiming to do a few different looks. I'm going to try to create as many as possible in as little of time as possible. I also, uh, with the scraps of the Nina 110 pound cardstock, I use some of these etched circle dies and I just cut out a handful of them. Some of them should be big enough for a sentiment or two from the stamp sets to go on to. So I'm going to clear my desk a little bit, zoom in, and get going. So off camera, I went and stamped and embossed the a bunch of those little cute critters from the stamp set here called Naughty or Nice. And basically what I've done is I just grabbed a few and now I'm going to quickly go through each of them. I'm going to use some alcohol markers. I'm going to fast forward so you don't have to watch me tediously go through all of these. But I just wanted to show you what they look like stamped out. And now I'm just going to basically quickly go through and use some alcohol markers, doing some highlights and shadows, using as many colors over and over again just to simplify and speed up the process the thinking all of that and here's the thing i stamped a few of these out several times so if i don't like the initial color that i chose i can do a different color on the next one no big deal and i will note that it did help when i heat embossed that black ink because now i have a little bit of edging for each of my colors to kind of gauge where they need to stay in so i do a lot less over blending and a lot less outside the line coloring that is a tip i have especially if you intend to color quickly like i'm doing here something like that will save you time in the long run because you have less chance of going over the edge not saying i haven't there's a few that i am and i am kind of just letting it be and if it really bothers me later i'll go back and fix it but for now that is the goal is to be fast and so just adding that little bit of finesse to the initial stamping and inking and it kind of just helps and you'll see especially on my pandas because i'm going to keep the base of the panda white i'm just doing a light gray outline and it will blend and go away and you won't see it from the designer's eye that little hint of a shadow will be right there it's just a little way to help your design a little bit bunnies i'm going to keep gray bears mostly brown penguins grayish didn't feel like going black on them take whatever liberties you want with coloring your animals as always kind of mix up the colors just like you'll see how the colors that jamie used on her color choices for the paper and the ephemera are just a little different than your traditional reds and greens. Adorable and cute and just fun. Differences in colors. And you'll notice more times than not, I like to use the brush tip when I'm using or when I'm coloring in alcohol ink. And I'm going to use a couple of different greens just because a lot of the, the coloring on the uh, paper and the ephemera has different color greens in too. And when there's a lot of layers and a lot of things to color, don't be afraid to use to leave a little bit of white. It's okay to have white space. And I have a guilty little secret for you. More than 50% of my card making stash is Christmas. And I can't exactly say why, but I just love Christmas. 
So I've always had a little more Christmas stuff than maybe the average person, which is interesting because majority of the years, at least since children, <laughs> I have not gotten my Christmas cards out like I wanted to. Like a few of them actually went out in April this year. And that's okay, because when you have a busy life with kids who want your attention all of the time, it's okay. I have embraced the fact that I may never get my Christmas cards out on time like I want to, and if I ever do, I will just be that much more happy about it. And you'll notice that I am hopping back and forth between colors and Sometimes when you're doing a lot of these things in bulk, you just start seeing the similarities and the designs and you just dive in. And that's kind of how I approach when I'm coloring in mass. I just keep out the colors that I think will work with what I'm going for and then adjust. And you'll notice I'm not focusing so much on the shading on the stockings themselves, I feel like the animals were the only things really needing that 3D shading, so that's kind of why I stuck with that game plan. And finishing off with some purple because I have a little lady who loves everything purple, so um, I think that's a fun idea to do, which is just to play with dimension a little bit more when you have your tags. I thought to do it last year when I made my own tags, but I made them in bulk and at some point I was kind of over the let's be 3D and more like I've made more than 50 tags. I need a break for my fingers. So I just started phoning it in after a certain point to be perfectly honest, but that's okay. But you see how quickly I am whipping out each tag. All these tags are, are the pattern paper and a little ephemera. And then I can add a little note on the back side if I want to, a to from, whatever you want to do. You literally can create something as simple as this, as quickly as this, without a whole lot of effort. And I'm hoping that today I've shown you a few ways that you can use to just really speed up the process of Christmas creating. I feel like when I have three kids and a larger extended family that occasionally the holidays can get a little bit more overwhelming and gift giving is one of my favorite things. I own a gift shop with or co-own a gift shop with my mom and that is what we do. We create custom gifts for people and like so that's my thing that's my jam and so any place i can expedite or mass produce i am there for it because you can always come back and customize later if you have something in mind from the beginning that is cute and works on multiple levels for multiple people you can just really create amazing things really quickly without just, you know, overdoing it and overwhelming yourself. I really like to teach people not to let the holidays especially get to you where you can't handle the stress and pressure of all that you're doing because then it kind of takes the joy out of it. And that's not the point. The point is to really just enjoy the gift giving process. And so that's the philosophy I teach to my customers, which in turn translates to how I deal with my paper crafts and how I try to mass produce things as often as possible. I know that it is not always um, an available option. Sometimes there are certain ideas and concepts for designs that will take a little bit more time and be more tedious. Um, you'll find that a lot of times, especially in die cutting or if you're doing foiling, yeah, it's a little bit more tedious. And even if you are coloring in 
with alcohol markers. It could be more tedious, but if you walk in with a certain mindset of all that you want to accomplish and how quickly you are allowing yourself to get it done, then it goes a lot smoother. It happens a lot faster and you end up with some amazing results. But that's just me. I've been doing this for a long time and so I do have practice, yes, but I also allow myself to just creatively play. I am all about the playing around until you find what works and not being afraid to scrap what doesn't work because there's an occasion where I make something or I filmed it and I should be proud of it and I'm not. And yeah, it's okay. It's okay to scrap stuff. It's okay to say, eh, that's not really my cup of tea. And guess what? You might be amazed because I've made oopsies and mistakes and I'll put them on a discount pile and people will pay full price because they're like, no, this is amazing work still. It may not have been the result you were going for, but it's still professional and well done. So I'm going, I said that to give a gentle reminder to you all that what you may think was a fail may be something that someone goes, there was a lot of love and attention that went into this and I really love it. And, or they feel just, you know, like, oh gosh, I have a few friends. They absolutely love homemade gifts and they don't want perfection. They want to see your love in it. And the fact that you have handmade something for them, yeah, that's, that's the point. And so, yes, I will be better. I'm promising to myself I will be better about card making this year, but at least I have a good jump start on my tags. I'm not going to tell you how many tags I'm going to end up needing this year, but look at how fun all of those were. I ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these paper tags, and then nine of these colored in tags. I have a pretty good jump. That's 18. That's not too bad, especially when I need about 50. So in a matter of less than 20 minutes, I've created all of these together and they're great. They're amazing. They're fun. And I can't wait to pick who I, and I do this. I pick who each of these tags goes to and I'm kind of picky because I like to fit personality with my tags and I'm weird. I know, but it's okay. Uh, that's just how I do gift giving. That is my, this is why I created a business around it. So I am going to let you all go. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial about how you can elevate tags and just do something a little bit more fun and different and put your heart, put your love into it. And I think the recipient will absolutely enjoy what you have put into your work. Um, don't forget to check out the links down below to the shop. I will have my affiliate link down there. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Don't forget to find the joy in your day and happy making. Bye.